At one point in our lives, we've all tried all sorts of weird things in order to get superpowers. From wishing in a field of dandelions, to throwing all of our coins into our wishing well. But despite, despite all of our efforts, nothing seems to work. Even though we are not able to get superpowers in the real world, we can get some pretty useful skills. One of my favorite ones is propagation. There you go. The ability to turn one plant into an endless supply. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, luckily for you, today I'll be showing you what you need in order to practice this skill, how to practice this skill, and how this skill can benefit you and society. My fellow botanist Gillian here already taught you how to grow your own plants, and today I'll show you how to multiply them. Now grab your scissors and let's get started. First, let's start with what you need in order to practice this skill. It's quite simple. All you need is a rose bush, some soil, a pot, some sort of a mini greenhouse. I like to use bottles for this, but you guys can use like plastic bags or anything that can make some sort of mini greenhouse or a greenhouse itself if you guys have any. And of course, some scissors. Now, well now we're gonna go on how to practice this skill. It's relatively easy, although one thing I need to mention is that these are roses, so whatever I do with this does not really or fully apply to other plants because there are millions of options out there. So please be mindful that everything I do here does not apply to all the plants. But let's get started. So first, you're gonna grab, you're gonna go to your garden and look for a big, healthy, hardy rose bush of your preferred color. I recommend getting, getting a cutting between a withered rose and a woody base. This is that way, like, this is because it usually, the plant has already like wasted all of its nutrients for like the rose. So all the nutrients are in here. Now, I recommend making it at least six to eight inches long. That way it's big enough to make roots while also you know, grow. Now we're gonna put the soil into the pod just like this. Hopefully I don't make a mess in this table. All right. We're gonna ignore this. <laughs> so now that you got your soil into a pod, this step is a bit optional. But if you want to, or if you have the money for it, you can buy some uh, rooting powder. This is so like the soil is more beneficial to rooting, which is what we need. But I usually don't do it because it costs money and you can just do it naturally. But if you're not patient enough or just want roses as soon as possible, you can just put some in there and go for it. Another thing that you have to do like watch out for is if you're putting powder into the soil, you want to wash it thoroughly before you put the powder. That way it doesn't get washed away. So now you're going to take your cutting. You're going to cut it at a 45 degree angle, slightly tilted, not a lot. This is so the plant can focus its nutrients on creating roots instead of sustaining the rose. Now we're going to place it on the pod. You want to make a nice neat hole. You're going to firm the soil around it so it's firmly in place. I recommend also getting rid of any like thorns or leaves and leave a few notes in there. Notes are where the leaves emerge from the stems. That way the plant knows, hey, uh, I got I got thorns here, I got leaves here, but I don't have any here, so here's where I need the rootings. It, it makes them root faster. Now, after this step, you can water it thoroughly, but Right now, I'm not going to do it because I know it will like spill all over the table. So we're going to skip that step. But yeah, water thoroughly once it's like this. Now we're going to see why this skill is beneficial to society. Well, according to Tabo Tsera, there are many benefits that come with propagation. One of them is money. Instead of going to your local greenhouse and wasting a bunch of money buying plants or seeds for your garden, 
you can propagate your very own plants at home 100% free. Another benefit is time. Instead of waiting an entire season for your plants and vegetables to make seeds, you can just propagate them instead, which also makes a, a greater harvest. Not to mention the amount of cash you could save by propagating your very own fruits, vegetables, and even spices. Valentine's Day will be much cheaper now that you know how to uh, propagate roses. Um, propagation also ensures that the cuttings will be as beautiful as a parent plant, ensuring that you don't have any you know, weird surprises when you grow seeds. So yeah, no surprises there. Another, well, yeah, another benefit that I mentioned is also money. Instead of having your own, like, collection of roses by buying them, you can have, like, one rose, and then from that rose, you can make two, and then from those two, you can just have your very own rose garden. For informed gardeners, it means that your favorite roses and flowers and plants will always be growing in your garden. But for wildlife, it means the survival of their species. For example, According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, the monarch butterfly's larvae can only eat milkweed, which is considered in danger in places such as uh, Missouri, Illinois, and here in Iowa. Propagation allows these plants to continue to spread further, and therefore the cycle of life can prevail. Propagation is not for everyone, but with enough patience and perseverance, anything can be accomplished. Propagation allows you to have your favorite plants and flowers growing in your garden all year round. It's a process and it will take time, but I believe that's what makes it so special. Being able to sustain and multiply life is one of the most unique and wonderful things in this world. It's also a free and easy way of keeping your plants. And that's why today I showed you what you need in order to practice this skill, how you can practice this skill, and how this skill can benefit you and society. Thank you all for joining me today, and good luck propagating.